Hello, Husker fans. Welcome to the Pick 6 podcast for this week. We are, this is March. We're in March. The Nebraska basketball teams aren't that great, so maybe March won't matter that much, but this is March. Uh, along with Tom Chattel and Evan Bland, I'm Sam McEwen. Hello, gentlemen. Heavy hitters. How are you? Great. Hanging out. How we doing? Living the dream. We're doing okay. Evan, you're going up to uh, watch Nebraska baseball in Minneapolis. Uh, they will be playing, uh, boy, you want to talk about some heavy hitters. They're going to play Vanderbilt. How good's Hawaii? We'll talk about that um, in maybe in a different podcast. Uh, and then uh, they're going to play Ole Miss, the defending national champs. Vandy looks like the best of the three teams based on the, the, the results early in the season. But that'll be kind of a, that'll be kind of a fun thing to watch. Uh, the Nebraska women's basketball team is, uh, I'm watching them as we speak down here on the uh, on my phone, they trailing 13 to eight to Michigan State uh, in the first round of the uh, Big Ten tournament. They need to win today, and in my opinion, they need to win against Indiana uh, in order to make the NCAA tournament. And then the Husker men are no longer on a heater because the team they played got on a heater. Uh, one of the one of the, the hottest heaters I've ever seen uh, on Tuesday night when Michigan State hit 12 three pointers uh, in the uh, second half of that game. So we've got plenty to talk to uh, talk about. But we're going to start with football. I think that's probably an appropriate place to start. It's always an appropriate place to start, and we'll start with the NFL Combine. Today, O'Shawn Mathis works out at the NFL Combine with the linebackers. On Saturday, Trey Palmer and Travis Vokalek work out with the wide receivers and the tight ends. These are the men who are most likely to be drafted in April. Thoughts? Well, my thoughts are I hope he has a better Combine than he did, he did last season. Oh, Mathis, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, when he came to Nebraska, he he was an NFL prospect, right? Yeah, and he, he's still in a, last year did not change that, but I, I mean, he he was a playmaker, and maybe he was hurt. These guys sometimes play hurt. They don't tell us, but he, he you know, the the, the the guy made some plays toward the end of the year. Yes, he did. Iowa game, uh, Wisconsin was game. He got pretty good at the end. Yes, but boy, it, it took him a long time to get going, yeah. and so. Um, but all that aside, yeah, he's an NFL prospect, and uh, this is where they, they measure. A lot of times, the NFL guys, um, this, this is where they, the scouts, the GMs, uh, this is where they start the process. They don't necessarily care how you, how you played last season. It, it, they, they like to watch film, but they, they interview you in person. They get a feel for you, and they, they love the... Uh, the 40-yard dashes and all that jumping and running. And, and so um, th- this is where it starts a lot of times. So I, I'm sure, he, I, I, I'm sure he, he will get drafted. But um, who, else, who else besides uh, um, is there? Uh, Paul. Garrett? Garrett Nelson did not make the NFL okay, combine. Okay, okay. He's watching from home. Okay. He's not responded, I think, to recent media inquiries. Oh, I, I'm, no. I'm sure he's doing a Rocky Four style you know, right. uh, in the Russian mountains, kind <clears throat> of. Sure. Right. Based on not getting oh. invited to the combine, which I think he should have been, but he wasn't. So. But Trey I'm Palmer. Sh- uh, Trey. How could I forget Trey Palmer? Um, he's he's going to take the NFL by storm. Basically. He'll run one hell of a forty. We'll see what the rest. What else? But he he's does. just a great receiver. He gets open. He knows how to get open. Um, and I think you know, if he didn't. Open eyes. You know, if his eyes weren't already open to him, I think he, that for last year, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are now. So, my thoughts. One are these are three guys who were free agent ads for Nebraska. Right. None of these players were any that Nebraska identified or really even developed. Out of high school. Out of high well, school. Well, Vocalek. Vocalek got better. Years. Mathis and Palmer very much were one year were one offs who, who who showed up. So I think that's reflective of what Nebraska's program has been. Uh, you know, I think Mathis probably has the most to gain at the combine this week. Just uh, no question in, in in his measurables and what he does in drills. Like like Palmer, I don't know how much he has to actually prove this week. Like go back and watch any game that Nebraska played, and he clearly has the ability to go open. And has that separating speed. You know, his knock probably was he dropped a few too many passes that you that you wouldn't want to see. But you know, he's going to run a fast forty. And I think his film kind of says the rest of him. Uh, and then, you know, Vokalek, and you wrote about it in your story, Sam, but I think it's not the worst thing in the world for him to follow that Jack Stoll route, maybe going drafted, 
you have a little bit more of a say about where you end up. That's right. And that can work out a whole heck of a lot better than, than having maybe the notoriety of going in the seventh round and ending up somewhere. So to me, it's Mathis who has maybe the most to gain. But the other guys, like to, outside of some kind of disaster, I feel like they're kind of set. You know, Palmer maybe in that fifth round, and, and Vokalek will find a team as an undrafted free agent. Did Garrett Nelson have a – does he have an agent? Yeah. I mean, is there any way he could, he, he could come back? No. I mean, you, you know, obviously you hire an agent, you can come back, or you, if you seek a guidance, um, but I think once you sign, then you start accepting things. Yeah, he's declared Which, for which the is NFL ironic draft. because yeah. um, now they get all kind of things. And I know, but... Um, right. Because, boy, you know, I, I didn't know much about Garrett's high school, but I, I understand he... Uh, he played a little H back at uh, high school, and uh, you know I don't. I just so, I just don't. He just appears to me to be uh, not big enough to be a defensive end in the NFL, but maybe not fast enough to be a linebacker. But I wonder if he could have come back and and maybe played a little, a little bit of H back for uh, Matt Rule, and and like started a new identity for himself mm. to go to the NFL. Um, but um, <clears throat> I would have. I just. I'm selfish. I wanted to see one more year of Garrett Nelson out there. Uh, you know, he would have been a, a great Husker from that rule. But he's he, he had a long career. Uh, you know, you get banged up, you get beat up, you go through COVID. Uh, you you ready for something else? So um, I wish him well. I think he obviously he he'll probably he'll probably be a, a undrafted free agent. I'm, I'm gonna guess. And, Never. Um, There's always a chance. Always a chance. That but he could it, get picked it, it, late. But in his case, it's probably better to be, um, you know, signed by somebody who, who, who who's, who's, who's got a, a, a vision for you, for what, what you can be. And uh, sometimes you get drafted on the late as that, that's okay, we'll ta- I don't know if you'll fit, but we'll take him. And So I wish him well. I, I already miss him. So Yeah, it won't surprise me if he's a Buccaneer. Uh, Jason Lick down there. Yeah. Uh, you know, Washington has had a history of of liking Nebraska players. Um, the Eagles like Nebraska players, and so I, it won't surprise me if if he ends up. Cleveland has has been friendly before, so that's a really good point, though. I mean, I think there's a possibility that he could move to that kind of role. He's about the same size as Stuart Bradley was, and Stuart Bradley had a nice career in the NFL, but Stu was a he was a linebacker and. And Nelson played most of his career at Nebraska on the line of scrimmage. He didn't do a lot of pass coverage. Stu was able. Stuart Bradley was able to, you know, cover guys and and, and be out in the open. Um, well, the Garrett's, point. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say Garrett's got a motor. He may not be the biggest defensive end. Got a great though, motor. But he's got a motor, and you know, maybe somebody sees something in there. Okay, you know, maybe in this defense we'll, we'll, we can use him. I just don't know. As a developmental guy, you, you, you put him on the the the, 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 the taxi squad or the the practice squad for a year. What do you, you know? What do you see him fitting in eventually? I, I don't know what that is right now. But, mm-hmm. but, uh, the point you made about transfers, Evan, is 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 the thing that's jumped out to me. Um, obviously, Cam Jurgens was drafted last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and was a homegrown kid. He was moved position. Scott Frost, the one who made that suggestion, and it mm-hmm. worked. Um, but then Samari Toure was the other was the other guy drafted. Um, this year, I think it's probably going to be all transfers. Although Vocal like, kind of belongs to Nebraska. Um, I think I think it's just it just underlines that Nebraska has missed a little bit, or it has not properly developed players who are you know uh, within their program that are high school kids. I mean, Adrian Martinez is probably going to go to the XFL or the USFL. I mean, he signed with Mike Riley. I don't know that he's going to end up doing that. But I would be very surprised if Adrian were an NFL quarterback. And if you were to go back to um, the the first days after Adrian's freshman year, I think we all looked around at each other and we're like, this guy's an NFL quarterback. We did. And that didn't happen. And some of that is Nebraska's fault. Like, they didn't do a good enough job of putting him in position to develop. He didn't, didn't put enough good offensive line around him. They didn't teach him well enough. Um, you know, obviously he, he was kind of barred from going to outside quarterback coaches, uh, so he didn't he didn't develop um, a, as well as as he could have, and and some of that obviously is on him. But a, honestly, I think a lot of that's on Nebraska. 
And I do think that one of the things that Rule wants to really emphasize going forward is we have a plan to get you to the NFL. Now, that doesn't mean that Nebraska is going to have, you know, 11 guys getting drafted in three years. But it does mean that they're going to maybe go from two to six. That's the plan. Is that all of a sudden you have six NFL draftees, you're doing something. Um, I don't know if you guys, how much you guys follow the NFL draft. I follow it a lot. My favorite guy is Dane Brugler. He works for the Athletic, and he is a he's a draft guy, and he puts out this thing called the Beast, and he'll do that here in a couple of weeks after the combine, and it it, it includes it'll include all three of those guys. He goes like 500 prospects deep, so he does a really good job. But um, he has a top 15 at every position. So if you think quarterback, running back, offensive line, all that. Well, what's so interesting to me is that Iowa has a top 15 NFL draft pick at every level of its defense. Let me tell you who these guys are. At the defensive line, and this is the guy that's probably going to go first. His name is Lucas Van Ness. Most people don't even know who he is. He was was a a decent recruit, Midwest kid. They, They get him. They develop him over time. He was not a starter right away. He develops over time. He might be a first round pick. The second one at the second level was Jack Campbell. Everybody knows who Jack Campbell is, right? Mm -hmm. But again, not a five-star kid at all. He was a three-star kid, developed local. They turn him into a great play over time. The third one is is Kevin Merriweather. It's K-A-E-V-O-N. So this is a kid they got out of Detroit who was a late bloomer. He was a basketball player. He kind of moved into football in his senior year. And now all they got a guy at every level of their defense that is going to be a top three round pick. Not one of those guys came to Iowa as a blue chip prospect. And the last time that Nebraska had a level, a guy at every level like that was when they had Jared Crick, Levante David, and Alphonso Dennard. And what's true about all three of those guys? Crick, he had the measurables, but he was a Kozad kid. Levante David, nobody wanted him out of high school. Goes Juco, comes to Nebraska. Mm. Alfonso Dennard is a late ad from a small town in Georgia, southern Georgia. You know, um, comes up here, develops right away. Same story. And somehow, Nebraska, and who do we credit for that? We've got to credit Bo Pelini because he's the guy that helped develop those players. Carl Pelini, too. Somewhere along the way, Nebraska lost the plot. And Iowa got the plot. And Nebraska's got to get it back. So is that the is that the recipe for Midwestern teams? Like, do you just assume that yeah, you're not going to be able to compete with the SEC powers of the world and, and say that oh, you know, that's how you have to do it? I mean, I, and I think Matt Rule kind of laid that out a little bit. I don't bit think there's anything wrong with getting a five star. We're going to talk about a five star in a minute. But the point is that that Nebraska tw- twelve years ago and Iowa this year took guys that weren't necessarily at the top mm-hmm. and turned them into NFL players. Jack Campbell's probably going to have about as good of a career as Levante. Alfonso Denner's personal issues shortchanged his career, and Crick got hurt. He bought five years in. But this is, this is exactly what Nebraska needs to do. They need to do what they used to do just 11 or 12 years ago and mm. what Iowa's doing now. Mm. I, I guess they I, haven't done it. I guess what I mean is, is it sustainable? Like, it... <clears throat> it worked for Iowa this year, um, and, it, and it worked for Nebraska 10 years ago in that one instance. But can you live off of developing uh, you know, unknown prospects every year? Can you make a, can you make a, a career out of that? Well, you've got to have both. I mean, if, obviously, if, if you're if you going to win at the high level in college football, you've got to have players. you have speed. You've got to have guys who are, you know, look the part. Mm-hmm. But you also have to have the the foundation or the the baseline of the guys who you know they they, they fill in the cracks they they there's a you know guys who are self-made um nebraska was always about that too they always had both they always had uh, the, the heisman candidates you know the, the running backs the speed and they always had the offensive linemen who were <coughs> you know set in the line the lab, the lab for for, for for like three or four years, and didn't play until their senior year. So th- that's what Nebraska needs to bring back. Yes, they have to be more like Iowa, absolutely. Develop, 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 but also get your uh, Dylan Rayolas, right? You get both. Hmm. Well, you always take the quarterback. 
You know, it's so interesting that you mentioned Dylan Rayola because the last time Nebraska truly got a five-star quarterback with Tommy, Eric and Bobby Newcomb were, I don't know what they were, high fours. They were top 30 players, but they didn't have five stars back then. Tommy was a five-star. Uh, Terry Keneally's son just committed to walk on to Nebraska. Connor, you talk about a guy that, that emerged late. Terry Keneally's from Alliance, Nebraska. He becomes kind of a full-time starter in year four. Year five, he's all big eight. Right. That's so... In 94, they win a national championship. Terry Keneally, Tommy Frazier. You need both. Absolutely. They don't win the national title without they, Tommy Frazier, and they don't win the national title without guys like Terry they Keneally. They always had both. In the 80s, they had both. They had all, the, you know, all those guys. Rogier, Gill, uh, Steve Taylor, Robert Tutman, and then they had the guy, other guys. I mean, they, absolutely. They, and they, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You make it work, but it takes a special head coach to be able to, to, be able to do that. And, uh, to bring all those guys absolutely. on the so, same page. Because it's, it's you know, one process, one team. The guys you bring in are five stars also develop. They also become better. So, um, <clears throat> Especially when they're quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, even if they're five stars, are nowhere near as good as they're going to be when they're a senior. If they develop correctly, they'll be way better. Is that a segue to... Uh, yeah, I think that's a segue. <laughs> so Dylan Rayola um, visited Nebraska this weekend. He was able to do that because his uncle is part of Nebraska's football coaching staff. So basically he just visits his uncle. It's his family. So he's able to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes it a heck of a lot easier for him and I suppose also for Nebraska. Matt Rule can't have any contact with him. Um, but there's, there's weird things around that too. Like, I, you know, you could get a text or something like that. But anyway, he was with Donovan. And Dominic was back, obviously, the Husker All-American center from the, the late 90s and then 2000 was, was obviously as Dylan's dad. Um, it creates this really interesting se setup going into March. Um, the reality is Nebraska is going to get a visit from him on March 25th. They're going to surround Dylan on that visit with the best possible players they can who are also high-level prospects. It's going to work both ways. One, they're going to surround him with the kind of guys he looks around and says, I can win with these guys because these guys are almost as good as me. Simultaneously, they're going to they're going to put him in a space where like this is your quarterback, this guy, five star guy, number one player in the country. He's sitting right here. You come here, he comes here. Everybody goes home in a limousine, figuratively, <laughs> maybe for him literally. <laughs> Nil money, he's probably going to get some. But the point being that like it's you buy one, you know, it's you know, it's uh, it's one of those kind of situations. March twenty fifth, he's going to visit Georgia which is March 18th. I get this from recruiting reports. I haven't talked to Dylan specifically. And then my sense is that this is a two-team race. I don't think Georgia will get him. I don't think he should go to Georgia. I would say that to him. I think it's been down in Nebraska and USC. And you can't, pick two more, you can't pick two programs that are less alike in this conversation than Nebraska and USC. Because what USC is going to pitch him is, regardless of what we do on the field, we're probably going to be pretty good, but... We're going to get you to the NFL, and we're going to get you a Heisman. And how Lincoln Riley can pitch that is he's done it three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nebraska, but here's the other thing. At USC, how good of a college experience are you going to have? You, well, first of all, you have to love going to USC, so you have to love being in Los Angeles. You will, not be the, you will not be the most important sports figure in the city. Maybe Dylan wants that. Maybe he doesn't want to be that person. At Nebraska, he would be. His college experience would be way different here. It would be completely different. People, everybody would know who he is. In Los Angeles, that wouldn't be true. In L.A., they know everyone knows who you know Tom Cruise is, but they don't necessarily know who the USC quarterback is. So that would be different. Simultaneously, you have to ask yourself, can I win the amount of games that I want to win as a player to get me where I want to go to the NFL? What do you think? Well... I, I agree with all that. I, I will say, uh, in L.A., they, if, if, if you're Matt Liner or you're uh, Reggie Bush, they know who you are. You can get, you get into any club or restaurant in town. Um, you know, you can have anything you want, basically. Um, you know, the, the, in L.A., it's the, 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 the Dodgers, Lakers, and uh, USC football. Those are the, the, the franchises. The Rams are good. But if USC football is winning, there, there is, there is, 
uh, uh, big as the Rams. NFL is not that big in L.A. So he can be big in L.A., but it's different than Lincoln, Nebraska, right? <clears throat> and I look at his family, and um, you know, Dominic Rowe was one of my favorite Huskers, um, but he's not a guy who needed a lot of attention no, or, or wanted a lot of attention. He did went about his work, and um, he was one of, the, one of the most ferocious players, one of Mel Tanniper's all-time favorites. Um, you know, um, Donovan um, Rayola, we've seen him, right? And uh, doesn't like... No to, nonsense. Doesn't like to talk much, doesn't want the spotlight on him. Right. Um, kind of hard to find, um, but... Uh, we don't know yet, but he may, he may be very good at his at his, his uh, job. Uh, they, they certainly, uh, Matt Rule uh, wants him around. So, but again, uh, not guys who want who want the spotlight. Um, so, I'm gonna guess that uh, Dylan is a little cut out of that cloth. Um, so maybe that leads him here. Um, he sure enjoyed to throw the bones, though. I don't he think seemed to enjoy he's that attention. here because of Dad. I don't think he's making the old man happy. Okay, I'll go through Nebraska's process and make him happy. I don't, I don't, I don't know Dylan, but I'm, I think he's here because he actually is interested in what this has to offer. I think he's um, interested in rule. It, well, wasn't, they had crossed Nebraska off the list. He wasn't Frost, right. Yeah. But I think, I think that, and the head coach matters. So, but... Um, is he for the, the, the you know some people like, like the LA scene and some don't um, so that'll be the question but you're right um, Riley will be able to offer him a lot of you know here's what we've done here's what I've done and uh, you can do that here obviously uh, USC quarterback is um, one Heisman last year uh, is um the guy is on the Heisman list right out right out of the gate because he's the USC quarterback. That's right. So, um, and he's going to have weapons around him too, right? Yep. But interestingly enough, you said, "Well, Big Ten cold weather, Pac-10 warm weather, eh, not so much." Two years, all that changes. Yep. He'd be playing half of his games in East Lansing, and uh, you know, um, and that's a whole other show about scheduling. But USC is going to play Ohio State. They're going to play Michigan, obviously. Uh, but they're going to be cold. So I don't think it'll bother him, um, knowing his dad's or his, his dad and his uncle. But um, I don't know. I think it, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. Uh, Lincoln versus L.A. And um, which Lincoln does he choose? The coach of the city. <sighs> that's a good one. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Uh-oh, that's going to be in first downs. No, that's good. Um, I, I, mean, I would just say, too, like – the, the Nebraska quarterback, we, we've seen him. It's like uh, being a president, right? Like the guy comes in, the quarterback comes in as a freshman. By the time you're a senior, they've got the gray hair. They're they're weathered. They're yeah. they're they're a lot different. Having gone through the grinder, we've seen it a lot. So that to me is the big question: is what what does he want? What's how is he wired? Like if you're wired to be the second or third most prominent person in a state, then then Nebraska is that place. And 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 some guys want to be part of the the change right like if you go to georgia you're a cog in the machine you're you're part of the yeah. borg as we've said like, and, like and, I, and, and, and that's okay um but tommy frazier 92 came here you know it was it was lou holtz and notre dame or tom osborne you know run the option for tom osborne and he probably could have stayed in florida and been anywhere he wanted to but he wanted to play but he also wanted to come and change a place and now, like you're saying, how is a kid wired? Does he want to be part of a tradition that's already started? Uh, you know, you want to learn her name, Lou Holtz? Or do you go and, you know, you're going to start something? Um, you know, Nebraska can't beat Miami or Florida State. You're the guy who can make that happen. Hey, that sounds pretty appealing. So, uh, same with, with, with Dylan Rayola. You come here, you know, you're, you, you can you know, not only be the guy, but you can be the guy who who made it all happen, and and going to. What I'm wondering is, what was growing up in that house? Was, was there a Husker helmet hanging out on the in in his dad's office? Did his dad watch the brass games every week? 
is, is there a pretty heavy Nebraska presence in the growing up in that house? You know, where he knew where Nebraska was all along, and uh, it, it, it meant something to him. It meant a lot to his dad. You know how it is. Your dad, you know, I, 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 I followed my dad's teams too. I mean, it's just sort of how you grow up. You know, what sort of things were around him growing up? And uh, I, I, I'd love to know that. Mm-hmm. Does anybody know who Nebraska's only first-round quarterback draft pick was? Well, everybody will say everybody will say Ferragamo, but it isn't. It, was it um, national title? No, oh. I was going to say Dave Hum, but it wasn't Dave Hum? It was Jerry Tangy. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm. Ferragamo was a fourth round pick. Okay. Now, um, now he probably ended up being a better. Well, he was a better NFL quarterback than Jerry Tangy. Okay. He's probably the best NFL quarterback in Nebraska history. Mm. Yeah. The second highest drafted one, and I can't, I don't know what Sam Francis did or didn't do in Nebraska. I don't know. He was the first overall pick in the NFL draft. Sam Francis was the first overall pick in the 37 NFL draft. And who was the other? Irving Fryer, first overall pick in the 84. Whatever. I can't remember. I think it was the 84 draft. Anyway, um, the second highest, if Sam Francis was on quarterback, and I don't remember if he was, is Dennis Clayridge, who was the quarterback for Devaney's first team. Right. He just passed away a couple years ago. Right. Um, I think he was a. You know what? Well, they. So there haven't been many, is my point. Because they, they didn't fit the NFL. But now, I'd love to take the 80, uh, beginning with, 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 with uh, 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 Turner Gill, and, and okay, put, take the Turner Gill, Steve Taylor, Frazier model, and put them in the NFL now. What would you get? Because now they want them to run. Pretty they interesting want question there. Um, I don't. Now. Or any of those guys, Lamar Jackson, I don't know. But they were the top of the line uh, in college football back then. They could run and pass, and they could really hurt you uh, running the ball. So uh, that's an interesting question. And uh, would Eric Crouch, was he 20 years too early? Uh, what would he have done right now? I don't know. Maybe they're still trying to move him to wide receiver. But. Um, Again, did not fit the NFL mold, and now and now all of a sudden those guys do. Um, you know, Matt Rule, if he gets on a run with those kind of quarterbacks, could uh, maybe, maybe, maybe he uh, develops the next Nebraska NFL, you know, quarterback who's drafted. Um, so. now it, was, it was not always so that USC was quarterback central. People think, well, that that's always been true, but no, it, they were running back you yeah, for a long student time. Student body, right? Absolutely. Student, so it was Charles White, offensive and, lineman, and Anthony Davis, linebackers and, then, and offensive linemen and running backs. Yes. Marcus Allen. Yes. So that changes. Um, Todd Marinovich was a first round pick, but of course that was that was a disaster. It really begins to change with Carson Palmer. So he he's Absolutely. the guy. He's the first one, and then Matt Leiner comes not long after that. Right. And then you've had, you know, you've had the the domino effect from there. Um, right. Mark Sanchez, Sanchez was, yep. was in there. So anyway, it, it, what it, it, things have changed there. It, in reality, Nebraska and USC were very similar in their quarterback NFL draft profile up until Carson Palmer. Well, look at all the Nebraska went one way and USC went the other. Look what Stoops did at Oklahoma. Right. He turned them into the quarterback factory. Yep. With his, he had Leach, he had Mangino. And then he he gets Lincoln Riley. He's had them all, and um, they, they every time they have a Heisman winner, they 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 add a statue outside the stadium, and most of the statues are not quarterbacks. Yeah, um, Sam Bradford, um, Jason White. I didn't vote for him. Sorry, Jason, but he won the Heisman. He did. Um, but anyway, there's these you know, Baker Mayfield. Um, um, and now Lincoln Riley is at USC. So I don't know. I think if you want a great college experience, you pick Nebraska. What what Nebraska has to be able to do is they've got to be able to say all the things that you would hope would be true about your college experience will be true here. And then on top of that, here's how we get you where you want to go in the NFL. Right. And, and it's also, you got to gauge how, how important the NFL is to them. I don't know. Like, it's not equally important to every single kid. That's true. It's imp- I'm sure it's very important, but it may not be... 
guys, I need you to know, I, I grew up and I didn't really care about college football. I cared only about the NFL. That's what I love, and that's where I'm going, and this place is a vehicle to get me there. I don't know. Well, you know, it's interesting because there's two kinds of attention here. Um, as L.A. glitz, right, where you go around town and, and, you're, and you're a celebrity, you're almost like a, a NFL player. Um, you're almost sort of a... Like, like one of the Lakers. Um, but in Nebraska, it's the, the students, right? It's the fans. Um, I don't think the USC fans are going to be all, it'll be the general public in LA. But in Nebraska, it'll be the, the, the fans will be, you know, throwing him roses and, and, you know, for some guys, that's, that's too much. But some people love that. Um, I didn't see him. Uh, Saturday, I missed it when he. I was at the game, but uh, Minnesota basketball game. But I didn't see him walking around uh, the student section. But apparently, he he thought that was okay to do that. And and uh, yeah, I, I think yeah, I get the feeling he kind of likes Nebraska fans. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't? Right. Right. Like if he, if in theory, if this kid commits to Nebraska, the next nine months are going to be the best nine months of his life. That's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Commit to USC and it's like well, going to USC. You know, nobody cares. Commit to Georgia and it's like, okay, who are the five star defensive linemen we have coming? Because that's what wins national titles. So, exactly. so the next nine months will be awesome if he oh. commits to Nebraska. The question becomes, what do those four years look like? And, and by the way, Lincoln Riley will recruit another one like him next year. Oh yeah, well, well they're, they're all lined up. So. They aren't lined up in Lincoln. <laughs> no. The flip side of the implication for Nebraska is if you if you land this kid and he's a five star and I, I'm t- you know I've watched enough film of him to say he's not a joke five star. He's not Kevin Dillman. He's good. He's really good. He's you know maybe not quite as good as Caleb Williams, but he's really good. And so like that's going to put other quarterbacks on notice though, like quarterbacks within your program. They're like, well, this guy's going to be here. And remember why Nebraska said no to Joe Burrow. Because they, they thought they had the guy. They had their guy. I, I really think, uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, uh, uh, Dylan Rayola will, will like, I, I can't project how he'll do in college. He'll probably have an unbelievable career. But I think it's, 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 in terms of his impact, his impact on the field in Nebraska will, will be huge. But I think his impact right now is, 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 is oh, oh, Almost bigger, because I feel like it get him. It, get, it gives rule instant credibility with everybody, uh, other recruits. He brings other guys. Uh, um, he 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 becomes a magnet who attracts other people to Lincoln, who can play. Um, you know that. You know, I would say again, Tommy Frazier. I wanted to compare the two, but the the '90s began when they got Frazier. That's when everything began in the 90s and I really think you know if if Rayola comes then the Rayola effect could, could be maybe not national title 90s but you get other people coming here you you change the way everything feels and the way everybody thinks and uh, I think getting him the impact will almost almost be bigger now than what he what he might do on the field it's possible. But r- real quick, though, too, like, and, and maybe Nebraska is the leader, and maybe he commits to them in the near future. But what if he doesn't? What if he goes to Georgia? What if he goes to USC? Is is missing out on him equally as impactful nope. as getting him? No. It's not. I'm not trying to be rude about it. No. Why? Because, first of all, some of it would be psych- psychological, and you would be like, oh, he's going to USC. Well, what do you get? What what can you do? There's nothing you can do. It's Seen it's it's years. not the guy's fault that's there now. If it were Scott, yeah, they put their best foot forward. Yeah, they, well, we did the best we could. You know, I mean, what can we do? We can't change what Nebraska was before we got here. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then the second thing is, you know, there's other quarterbacks that you can bring in your program, and you can still go get good football players. Um, and I don't know. I don't know that the key to Nebraska getting where it wants to go. Which isn't, I don't know how to explain it, but Michigan football went to won back-to-back Big Ten championships with Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy. Now, J.J. McCarthy is actually a five-star, but 
neither one of those guys are, are going to have like these spectacular NFL careers. Um, you want to get to, you want to be, uh, Georgia just won the national championship with a guy that may be a third day pick. Mm -hmm. You want to get where Georgia and Michigan are. You go recruit the players that make them Georgia and Michigan. It's not the quarterback. So I think it's a top offensive line. It's a lot. It's, 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 it's both the offensive and defensive line. Yeah. I'll get the quarterbacks in the big 10. Good. But other than Ohio state. Great. Well, like I mean, Purdue's quarterback's a good player. Aiden right. O'Connell, he had right. you know he's a five year guy. He got better as went, time yep. went on. They won the Big Ten West this year. Everybody here would take Big Ten West title, but they went nine and five, and he lost games too. So you know, Purdue had some of the pieces. They didn't have all the pieces. They did pretty well. Meanwhile, a couple years ago, you know, uh, three thousand year old Tanner Morgan leads Minnesota to an eleven win season, and that had very little to do with Tanner Morgan, as we've now learned. He's been replaced. He was replaced at the end of the season by a guy that could barely throw mm. at the end of last season. And, you know, three years ago, we're like, oh, Tanner Morgan, 35 touchdowns. It had nothing to do with Tanner Morgan. He was, he was the guy pulling the trigger. He was the guy throwing the football. But he wasn't the guy catching him. He wasn't, he wasn't two NFL receivers. He wasn't three NFL running backs. It wasn't all those things. So, you know, like, I think everybody understands what it takes to be a really good team, and it is not – solely defined by the quarterback. So, no, I don't think it would be as big of an impact. If he comes, it's a huge impact because of the players he brings with him. Right. So you do lose something there, but, you know, I don't know. And quarterback play is mercurial. How many times are we certain that we know who the best quarterback is coming into a, into a recruiting class and then four years later who is actually the best? The number one pick of the NFL draft was perceived to be Bryce Young. I don't think it's going to be him now. I think it's going to end up being Anthony Richardson or Will Levis. And we saw Will Levis. We did see Will Levis. So, like, Big I don't, Will. you know, like, how do you know? Did anybody think Patrick Mahomes was going to be the best quarterback on the planet nope. 10 years ago? No. I didn't. Not, Not even his senior year they did. Right. So, you know, I, th I think it's... I think you just don't always know. You got to play the game in the big mm -hmm. in the game in the Big Ten. The game is offensive line, and then you got to have a defensive line to hold the other offensive lines at bay. Um, you know, and, and neutralize them so they don't dominate the game. So, it's all up front, and that's where this thing is going to go if it's going to go. And um, you know, Wisconsin's running backs—they had the best running backs in the league, right? That was their mo, and then that might change. It's probably going to change now. Um, so if you want to get a running back and offensive line, you, get, you, you can make a living in the Big Ten doing that. Um, but I just think there are, are different levels of the Big Ten, and now with that divisions, okay, what's going to get you to the the, the, the middle, of the pack, and go to a bowl game every year? And then there's, okay, you want to try to win the Big Ten, you want to try to go to the playoff. Well, you you need you need everything, and you you, you do need the uh, the uh, Rayolas of the world if you're going to try to do that, I believe. You, you, need, you, need, a, you need a couple of superstars uh, with everything else. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Nebraska's a long way from any of that stuff. But I think as we, the Big Ten is going to be, okay, there's the Big Ten West formula. Let's win the division and let's go to a bowl game and here we go. Everybody gets a raise. Um, or are you going to try to beat Ohio State? Are you, are you, are you, are you going to try to beat Michigan? And, and now maybe USC. So, um, <clears throat> By the way, I think beating USC would be a great goal. I think that's a goal that's in between beating Ohio State and going to bowl games. Because I, totally I think Ohio State is the hardest program to beat consistently in the Big Ten. USC would be somewhere in the middle. Utah beats UC at USC with regularity, and I think Nebraska can become Utah. But that's, I mean, until Lincoln Riley gets a, a, a defense, you're right. If you, if, you, if you ever figures that part out, I think I could dominate a lot like Ohio State does. That's very true. This was a full meal. I think this podcast alone can just stand on its own. We'll come back with another podcast uh, talking a little bit about Nebraska men's basketball and about baseball this weekend. Uh, it's halftime of the Nebraska women's basketball game, first round, and Nebraska's behind 29-25. After playing a lousy half, they're only down four. All right, for Tom and Evan, I am Sam. We will be back with another podcast to break down Husker men's basketball and Husker baseball and a few other things. Thanks for listening to the Pick 6 Podcast.